Hi, my name is Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our May Basics box. This month's box is all about graphite. We'll go over the materials, talk a little bit about value, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up while working with everything. Let's get into it! For our surface this month, we have the Sketchbox Signature Creamed Toned Paper. This mixed media paper has a slight tooth to it, which makes it perfect for dry medium, and it's going to be a cotton-based paper, so it's super absorbent. Now our first art supply in this month's box is going to be a set of woodless graphite pencils from the Pacific Art Company. Each pencil is going to be a different hardness, which will allow us to create really rich and deep contrast. To sharpen our pencils, we have a two-hole pencil sharpener from Pacific Arc. And for our eraser this month, we have a high polymer eraser, which is perfect for graphite. Now to get a better understanding of our pencils on our cream tone paper, I've gone ahead and swatched out a value scale. So on this value scale, we can see that our lightest color is going to be that 2B, and our darkest is going to be the 12B. Let's explore our pencils and talk about some of the pencils that we explored last month by doing a quick sketch of an eye. Starting with a basic sphere for our eye, I'll establish the upper lid, the tear duct, and the lower lid. Next, I'll establish the lid fold, the tear trough, and a little bit of the surrounding area just to identify that that eye is sitting in the ocular socket. These early stages of any drawing should really take the longest as you're kind of problem solving and figuring out where everything lays. So don't rush it, take your time, and remember we can always erase and go back in if we need to make any corrections. Whenever drawing an eye, I always feel like once you get the iris and the pupil in, it's really when you start to get a lot of life and character to your drawing. Now that I'm fairly happy with my sketch, I'll erase any extra lines and start to fill in areas. Here I'm focusing on areas of depth like underneath the eye or anywhere the shadow would be cast. Next I'll take my finger and smudge those areas so I can get a nice smooth transition. With the groundwork of my drawing established, it really becomes a game of just pushing those values. So switching to our 6B pencil, I'm emphasizing only the darkest areas and building that value. Now the human eye loves contrast, and contrast is going to be areas of dark and light and the difference between the two. So this is a synonym for value. So our areas of higher contrast are going to be more visually interesting to our eye. By erasing certain areas of our drawing, we're actually increasing the contrast of our piece. Switching to our 10B, I'll go ahead and fill in our lashes using some directional marks, really emphasizing that waterline as I do this and making sure that our lashes don't go above it. Next, I'll darken up the pupil and start to build value in the eye. If you'd like to work more on your value control, try taking some inspiration from our prompt this month, Shadow, while creating your own piece. As a final step, I'll take our eraser to really emphasize those highlights and to clean up some of my transitions, as well as re-emphasize some of my darkest areas. It's going to be the value range of these pencils which allows us to create an interesting and dynamic piece. Our next item in this month's box is going to be a bottle of Sketchbox Signature Liquid Graphite. I really enjoy working in liquid graphite because it allows us the same value control as pencils, but we can use a more painterly approach with the medium. Now before we can use our liquid graphite, we will need to remove the seal. So for this you can grab a toothpick or a butter knife, we just need to unscrew the top and remove that seal. Once the seal is removed, make sure to screw on that cap tightly, as we can use our cap as an applicator tip. Now thanks to the consistency of our liquid graphite, you don't really need to squeeze too hard in order to get really nice consistent lines. And I really like to use it for zen doodling, just kind of filling the page and letting your mind wander. This is a great creative warm up to get you in the right headspace. And I found that I can get the most consistent lines by keeping that tip parallel with whatever surface I'm working on. Let's grab this soft grip talcum shader included in this month's box and explore some more painterly applications of our liquid graphite. Now using a dry brush and just a little bit of that liquid graphite, we can get some fun textural effects. 
And we can also create a variety of lines and line widths depending on how we hold our brush against that surface. By going over our liquid graphite with just a little bit of water, we can activate it and get some really nice and beautiful washes. Here I'm just dipping my brush in more water to get that subtle gradient, but we can always go back in with more liquid graphite to darken up areas. It's thanks to that water soluble nature of our liquid graphite that we can dilute it down to make a range of values. While our pencils gave us a great value on the darker side, this liquid graphite allows us to achieve some really subtle and light values. When working in liquid graphite, I like to start with my lightest value and establish my basic shapes before going in and getting caught up in the details. So this month I thought it'd be fun to do a little tea set. So I've established my kettle and my cup, and I'm going to go in and create a little steam effect. With that first layer dry, I'll go back in and start to build value and form in my piece. Now, just like we talked about in March, every time I mix a value, I'm going to test it out on a little scrap piece of paper first before going back in and using it on my actual artwork. This helps to ensure that my values are correct, and it can save you from a lot of headache. Now at this stage, we're starting to get a good sense of form and structure in our piece. This is going to be because I'm focusing on areas of light and shadow, so any area that's in shadow or turning away from the light is going to be a bit darker than anything facing towards the light. With my liquid graphite fully dry, I can go back in with our woodless graphite pencils and start to increase the contrast throughout the piece. And I'm doing this starting with our 2B pencil. So you can really see just how much darker those pencils are when compared to the light values that we can achieve with our liquid graphite. When working on the handle of our tea kettle, I'm gonna go back and forth between that left and that right side, as I've always found that working on a symmetrical object, if we balance between those two sides, we have a better understanding of the structure, and it's more likely that whatever we're drawing will come out as symmetrical. That's all for this month's video. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxMay. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to check out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.